Well, what do we have here? Nice late 80s or early 80s mini. Uh, look at that cool interior. And uh, see, needing some tuning. Oh yeah, love the love the impact bars. So hopefully we'll get this one sorted out today. And under the bonnet, we've got something interesting. A Swift Tune 998. So this should be an interesting, interesting tune here. Um, Wax that 998 carb, HS4. So, okay. Well, I'll get on it and see what I find. Well, I've pulled the plugs out and they're not as black as I was expecting, but they still are quite dark. Um, 35 thou plug gaps, so I'll need to double check the ignition system here, make sure that's good. But the reason that I'm looking at this car is because it did not pass an emissions test. It was running 2.5% CO at idle, and the limit is 1.5, so this is why I'm out here looking at this car today. So I'm just testing the spark plug leads. This is spark plug wire one. You can see it's 4,390 ohms or 4.4K. So uh, these plug wires are very resistive and he's running BPR six plugs. I think this is gonna need a set of plugs and wires to bring the total resistance down. Here's the uh, coil lead. Again, almost 5,000 ohms. So the whole total resistance in this ignition circuit from the coil to the block is 10,000 ohms before it gets to the plugs, which are also 5.5K because they're resistive types. So a total of 15,000 ohms resistance. And coil resistance is approximately 3 ohms. So I need to double check to see if this module has the capability of running variable dwell or if it's just a standard electronic uh, distributor running 3 ohms. I may have to upgrade this to a high power system because we have 1.5% CO emissions and this may not be powerful enough to maintain that lean burn at idle and at higher speeds. So I've gone ahead and replaced the spark plugs with some new BP6ES plugs, non-resistive type, 25 thou gap. I noticed with 3 ohm coil this is probably running a low power system but I want to start out with 25 thou. I also replaced the wires with power spark ones to lower the total resistance down. So I'm going to go ahead and do some timing sweeps and see what the timing of this distributor gives. I did notice that it is a swift tune distributor but no no vacuum advance on it. So be curious to see what the curve is on this. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do next. Well, after doing some idle adjustments here and getting it to lean out to 1.01 or 0.95. Uh, I noticed that the idle would just fluctuate and I couldn't find a stable point where it would, it would idle smoothly. And then once I checked uh, the throttle shafts with some brake cleaner to see how much air leakage there was, this carburetor practically stalled the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this carb out for a freshly rebuilt AC Dodd one and we'll get back on with the tuning. Well, we've got the new carb on. And uh, I just set up initially idle at 0 0.95, 0 0.96, but uh, really nice, really clean so far. Need to do the uh, profiling next. All right. All right, well, we've dialed in the needle. Uh, I switched from the AAC to the AEM, and it gave me pretty much lambda one all the way up to five. So then I went and tweaked the, uh, the dash pod oil. We're now running uh, 530 in this car. And I think it sounds uh, pretty good. All right, so fire it up. Grab it. Oh, look, the tuning equipment is out. And we have a Mark I Australian Market Cooper S. Very nice car. And under the bonnet, we have a 
A plus 1275, the original motor got replaced with this unit. Twin HIFs and 65D ignition system. Now I've already started working on this car and I started by checking the plug leads. The original ones that were on here were uh, these blue ones here. They were 12,000 ohms each. So 24,000 ohms of resistance and you can see the condition of these plugs. At least there's some coloring to them. And also I found that the original coil that was on here was a 3 ohm type instead of the 0.8 ohm that should go with the uh, 65D. So I went ahead and replaced the coil as well and I put a fresh set of uh, BP7ES gapped at 35. So we're going to get it fired up and move on to checking the condition of these. So I've had it running and I took the air filter housings off just to get access to this, but uh, it actually runs fairly well. The um, air fuel ratio was in the 9.5 range all the way up to about uh, 4,000 RPMs, and then it started leaning out about 4,200 on up. And um, either someone's modified these needles or these needles were a good choice to begin with, but I'm going to go ahead and take these needles out and tweak them um, between 4 and 5. I also noticed on a harder just quick throttle accelerations the air fuel ratio was going to the sevens so I need to lean out the uh, or thin out the oil in these dash pots to to thin that out a bit it was just too much fuel um, but the big problem I noticed is that the timing on this 65d here uh, it was going to 19 degrees at 2000 rpms and then above that it was going to 26 but it kept advancing above four and I could hear the engine really wanted the timing but not at 5000 rpms so I'm going to go ahead and change out the distributor. I've got a recurved power spark unit here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in and hopefully get some better advance out of this thing. And I also need to do a driving test. I actually have the my air fuel ratio gauge system hooked up directly into the manifold. Um, this car had a port drilled for it, so I went ahead and hooked it up so I could actually do driving tests and check on the um, full throttle acceleration enrichment. All right, well, now we've got it running, and I had to do some custom needle work between four and 5,000 RPMs on both of these. Otherwise, the needle profile was pretty good. Uh, full throttle acceleration was 0.85, and uh, part throttle acceleration was in the upper eights. And like I said, I had to put a new distributor in with a new curve, so this thing now hauls ass. Sweet motor.